Hey guys, are you a Sony a7S III user and maybe have encountered a little bit of a choppy playback on your timeline when, you know, editing the footage because it's 4 to 2 and there's no hardware acceleration and maybe you thought, do you know what, I really need to render proxies with every single file that comes from my Sony a7S III. And then you realize that just slows down the workflow because you have to wait for the computer to render the proxy files. But did you know that your camera can actually shoot proxies inside so afterwards when you put them into the computer you already have the proxies and you don't have to render them let me show you this sony a7s3 proxy hack so first of all how do you access the proxies so if you go to menu and then the first tab under the image quality and all of the camera settings over there we can see that when you have the number one image quality selected you can see something down there called proxy settings if you click on that one the first setting over there is obviously you set them on and off so if you want the camera to record proxies or not then we have proxy file format which is xavs or hs hs is h.265 file format or if you want XAVCS, then that is H.264 file format. And then there's a few options over there as well. If you're only on the XAVCS file format, then you only have one option of the proxy file settings, which is 720p and 25 frames per second, obviously. And it's shooting at six megabits per second, 420 8-bit. If you go to HS, then you have a little bit of more uh, options over there to shoot the proxies in 10 bit, which is very, very nice to get the color as well. So, you know, helps you with the color grading and it shoots it at nine megabits per second or 16 megabits per second, four to zero. And both of these are hardware accelerated on Premiere Pro or DaVinci Resolve. So that's good. So all of the proxy settings, whichever one you go for, are hardware accelerated. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna leave it to XAVCS and then six megabits per second, 420 8-bit to get the lowest resolution of files and smallest file size. So it's the easiest to play back on the computer. And now it's time to put the proxies in the computer. So I'm gonna show you how you can actually attach the proxies or get them, you know, figured in your editing software. I'm gonna show you in Premiere Pro. So now when putting the files onto the computer, you notice, you know, the usual very familiar private and M4 root and clip. Then now here you can see all the files that I have recorded. So today we have recorded these two files and these were the ones that I actually shot, right? So as you can see, these are the 422 10 bit files. They're quite big. So let me make a new folder over here and then just uh, paste them over there. Now the question is, where are the proxy files? Because you don't see proxy files over here and these for sure aren't proxy files because um, if you just go properties of these, you can see there are 4K files, 25 frames per second. Data bitrate is like 140 megabits per second. Then where are the proxy files? So if you wanna find the proxy files for the files you just recorded, you have to go back one folder and they're under the sub folder. So when you double click on that one, you'll see random files or loads of these files over there. And the file names kind of match to the ones that you have recorded. So as you can see, these are 1339. I have renamed mine so that I know A7S3, 1339. And if you look at this over here, A7S3, 1339 and 1338. So these two files. And as you can see, the file sizes are much smaller than our file size or original file sizes. So if you want to copy these proxies across, you just copy them over. Let's make a new folder over here proxies and then paste them over there boom let's open up premiere and then i'll show you how you can actually attach the proxies to these files so this is our test project over here let's start to import the files double click over here and then we have desktop test okay so these are our main files now here so we're going to open them and import them in here and if i'm going to pull both of these to the timeline you can see that the playback is a little bit choppy as you can see. So it's not like the best, it's because it is H.264, 10-bit 422 and 422 isn't ex hardware accelerated on Premiere Pro and that's why it's choppy. So if you want a better timeline performance, look, it's even one eighth of a uh, resolution here 
selected it's not even full and it's still choppy 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 so if you want to get these proxies attached now to these what you can do is select both of these clips or one of the clips doesn't matter you can but it's easy if you want to do them all at once instead of changing this or selecting create proxies on the right click and proxy you go to attach proxies and then it shows you both of these files over here so we're gonna literally the first file is 1338 we're gonna click attach and it's gonna ask you like where are the proxies then so basically we're gonna go to oh it's already find found the proxies folder actually as you can see this is our test folder and we open the proxies folder and 1338 now you have to make sure that you link the right file to the right file if you put the other file then you're gonna see some weird stuff going on make sure that the file names match so this is 1338 we're gonna press OK unfortunately for some reason Premiere doesn't know to just attach all of the files or because even if they're on the same folder you can't just attach them all even if I've look I've selected relink others automatically but it just doesn't know how to do that so if you have a lot of files for example you're vlogging or you have a lot of different clips then it's quite annoying especially if you're a wedding filmmaker then it might be easier to just click on the proxies and create them in Premiere Pro and you know just wait for the render time because it automatically just links them up and you know that but if you have maybe like one long clip of like a ceremony or speeches or some kind of long clips that are not so many then it's just easier to record them on the camera itself because that will save you a lot of time so then the second clip we're gonna select that one as well okay and then now both of these are proxies so how do you enable proxies it's this button over here that says toggle proxies if you don't see that you have to click this um, plus button over here and then drag it from there drag it down there but i already have it there once you have dragged it down there press ok and then you'll see oh it's gone see so now i'll just drag it down there boom i have proxies button down there and i press ok now if i click this proxies button boom you should see a little bit of a change here if i go full screen you can see it's not the full resolution there anymore so and now look at the timeline performance oh how easy is that? It's because the proxies have been enabled and you can easily just edit the footage, press play and things like that. Very, very simple and very easy to do that. And then later on when you're color grading, just toggle the proxies off again. And as you can see, the timeline performance isn't that good, but you can just do your color grade on the actual big file size and you're not gonna, you know, just mess up your color grade by doing that. By just one button, proxies, boom. There you go. There's one more thing that you might need to consider when shooting the proxies on the camera or actually recording the proxies as well as the main files on the camera. And that is the SD card read and write speed. So if you're shooting like some slow-mo in like maybe 60, 50, 100, 120 frames per second and you wanna you know, record proxies of these as well, then it's quite hard on the camera, well actually on the SD card to write both of these files on the SD card. So basically, you might need a little bit of a faster SD card, so from V60 to V90, or if it's V90 card already, then you might not be able to record like 120 frames per second or 50 frames per second and record the proxies as well. Well, that's what I experienced. But if you're shooting like long files, maybe like speeches or some kind of things like that, and you want like easy edits of these, then it's worth doing it on the camera. But if you're using CF Express Type A cards, then you don't need to worry about that. You just select any of the file formats and then you can record proxies there as well if you wanted to. So I'm using quite cheap SD cards to save money. I'm using like some V60 and V90 cards. So if you wanna check out which cards I'm using to save some money, check out the links below. So I hope this little A7S 3 hack was helpful for you. If it was, hit that like button, it actually makes a difference. Subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you in the next one. I'll meet you in the comment section below if you have anything to say. Bye-bye.